9 p.m. in RTD. It's time to English New Edition for tonight's headlines. We have the Harris State Church, the opening ceremony of the Djibouti International Fair. The opening of the Emirati File Hospital in the south of Gaza Strip. Welcome to our newsroom. Uh, it was uh, the most anticipated event. Uh, the Djibouti International Fair raised the curtain uh, this morning at the International Exhibition Center, and it was uh, with the undeniable brilliance that uh, the President of the Republic, uh, His Excellency Ismail Omar Ghele, accompanied graciously by the First Lady and President of the National Union of Djibouti and Women, inaugurated the event. Uh, the President proudly cut the ribbon, marking the official start of this uh, third edition of the Djibouti International Fair, along Alongside First Lady Madame Khadra Mahmoud Haid, the presidential couple symbolically opened the doors to a week dedicated to the economy, innovation, and commercial dynamism of Djibouti. This uh, solemn moment of uh, ribbon cutting took place in front of an enthusiastic crowd of uh, exhibitor dignitaries and uh, visitors testifying to the importance of the event uh, for the country but also for the region. Indeed, uh, this uh, international fair illustrates uh, new opportunities, fruitful partnerships, and dynamic uh, collaborations. Uh, after the opening ceremony, the President and the First Lady undertook a tower of the stands uh, that diving into the heart of the commercial excitement and innovation. From stand to stand, uh, the presidential couple interacted uh, with the national and international exhibitors uh, discussing investment opportunities, technological innovation, and the diversity of uh, products and services represented. The president showed uh, keen uh, interests in key sectors in, of the economy, interacting with the representative of logistics, energy, and infrastructure. His visit reinforced the, the importance of the international fair as a platform for connecting local and international economic actors. The First Lady, for her part, uh, displaying obvious uh, elegance, uh, focused particularly on the stunts highlighting local craft and cultural innovation. Uh, she uh, praised the uh, Djiboutian artisans for their creativity and their contribution to the local economy, highlighting the essential role of uh, culture in sustainable development by cutting the ribbon and uh, enthusiastically exploring uh, the stance the President of the Republic, Ismail Omar Ghele, and First Lady Khadra Mahmoud Haid uh, kicked off of a week of uh, businesses. Uh, discovery, fruitful exchanges, and promising opportunities for Djibouti and its international partners uh, after a four, four years uh, hiatus uh, due to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, international Fair uh, makes a triumphant return, uh, reaffirming its role as a regional and international economic catalyst. Uh, the last uh, edition in 2018 attracted representatives from uh, around 20 countries, confirming Djibouti's uh, central position as a regional trade hub. This day is much more than uh, just uh, the opening of a fair. It is the symbol of Djibouti's economic resilience. Uh, the Djibouti International Fair, known by its acronym, the International Fair, is uh, the showcase of these uh, momentums, highlighting the dynamic private sector, creative uh, craftsmanship, uh, and bold innovation of the countries. Uh, the International Fair represents an exceptional uh, opportunity to discover Djibouti's know-how, it is industry, uh, industry and uh, its logistics, uh, its uh, energy, its tourism, and many other sectors with the high potential. Uh, this uh, 2023 International Fair is officially underway, ready to write uh, a new chapter in the history of trade and innovation in the Horn of Africa. After a dynamic visit to the stands, uh, which uh, captivated the entrepreneurial instance of the 2023 International Fair, the President of the Republic, Ismail Omar Ghele, accompanied by the First Lady, Khadra Mahmoud Haida, made his uh, majestic entry into the big uh, tent. Uh, 
their, uh, their uh, an impressive assembly, bringing together the political class, ambassadors, UN representatives, and private sector was uh, gathered to celebrate Djibouti's economic uh, momentum. The respectful silence uh, that uh, greeted the presidential couple as uh, they entered uh, gave way to a uh, unanimous uh, standing ovation. Applause rang out, uh, resonating throughout the tent, uh, reflecting admiration and respect for the pres president's leadership and the first lady's uh, commitment to the country's development. The scene was marked by the diversity of uh, personalities present, symbolizing unity and cooperation beyond the borders, uh, government officials, distinguished diplomats, visitor entrepreneurs, and key private sector players shared a moment of uh, heartfelt applause, highlighting Djibouti's essential role in the global arena. The ovation lasted uh, several minutes, uh, marking a strong moment of uh, recognition for the leadership of President Gilly and the unwavering commitment of the First Lady to the development of Djibouti. Through this ovation, uh, the Assembly affirmed its support for the vision of the countries as a center of economic and commercial excellence in the Horn of Africa. International Fair 2023 already rich in success, began with the applause and unity, promising a memorandum um, Applause uh, and um, promising a memorable week of collaborations and fruitful exchanges. Uh. For his part, uh, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Yusuf Musa Dawale, has uh, indicated that this fair aims to strengthen uh, links uh, between regional and international players. It also contributes to the influence and prosperity of the national economy. For his part, the minister of uh, the acting minister of uh, commerce, Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, said that the return of the event thus confirms the economic recovery 
of uh, countries that has become the commercial and logistics platform between Africa, Asia, and the Middle East and Europe, uh, which arouses all interests, a showcase of uh, this economic momentum. The international fair is part of a perspective of uh, broadening regional integration. It does uh, contribute to the strengthening commercial relations between Djibouti and its neighbors to promote cross-border trade and open the way to new investment and cooperation opportunities. It is with the power of uh, the word that the President of the Republic, Ismail Omar Ghele, spoke uh, to underline the importance of the event. Uh, the 2023 International Fair is not limited to stands and commercial uh, transactions. This is an opening a statement, a call for collaboration, and Djibouti stands ready to be the field crumb of economic progress in the region. As the President said, drawing continued cheers. <laughs> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين. مدام زي مسير سي أبد إمام سجوا إنغام ساتيسفاكسيون. It is with great satisfaction that I join you for the inauguration of the third edition of the Djibouti International Fair. I take this opportunity to welcome all those who have traveled from various parts of the world to discover our country and enjoy the hospitality of its people. I would also like to congratulate the organizers and their many partners for creating this space for meeting and dialogue. I'm delighted to see that during this week, exhibitors and visitors, together we will present to the whole world the image of a country where tradition and modernity coexist in an atmosphere of conviviality and fraternity, a country that is proud to embody the values of peace, freedom, tolerance and solidarity in its identity. The enthusiasm generated by this major event testifies to its success, but this enthusiasm also reflects the attraction and interest that our country aroused in the business world. Certainly, our geostrategic position at the crossroad of several continents predispose us to play a pivotal role in regional and global trade. However, this geostrategic position would have no commercial relevance if it were not supported by structural asset and comparative advantages. It is this structural asset and this comparative advantages which create a favorable ecosystem and make Djibouti a privileged destination for entrepreneurship in complete freedom and security. You will certainly have the opportunity during this fair to discover the asset and business opportunities that Djibouti offers. However, I want to assure you that the government is sparing no effort to implement reforms, whether macroeconomic, sectoral, or legal, in order to create a climate of confidence conducive to investors. It is also the role of public authorities to create conditions conducive to the emergence of a dynamic private sector, a private sector that serves as a lever and catalyst for economic development. Still in his speech, the President of the Republic, Ismail Marghele, spoke of a geographical fresco in a global context where all countries are interconnected. He therefore specified integration is at all levels to accompany this march of the world. In an increasingly interconnected world, national and regional economies inevitably find themselves in the logic of communicating vessels. Faced with an economic crisis or a destabilizing conflict, these economies discover themselves interdependent, but they also discover at the same time vulnerable in relation to each other. No country can claim to prosper in self-sufficiency today. This is why we must follow the course of history and ensure that interdependence gives way to fully assumed regional integration of our economies. As you know, the political frameworks for this regional and continental integration supposed to lead to a single market have been established. This is obviously Comesa as far as we are concerned with more than 500 million consumers. But it's also about the FS FTA, the Continental Free Trade Area, which should help to considerably increase the volume of intra-African trade. These immense opportunities are within your reach. Our country is ready to serve as a strategic platform for your entrepreneurial audacity to be crowned with success, because it is on your success that the future of our continent and our countries depends. Today, African countries do not want to reproduce the mistakes of the past, which consisted of saturating the public sector with excessive, budget-intensive, and unproductive recruitment. We are convinced that the vitality of the private sector, in particular SME and SMI, remains the best defense against unemployment. 
we are convinced that the development of the private sector is the most effective strategy within the framework of a growth and employment policy. Continuing his intervention, the President of the Republic indicated that the third consecutive year, the Djibouti International Fair is positioning itself as an essential crossroads. Uh, listen for more detail. For the third consecutive year, the Djibouti International Fair is positioning itself as an essential crossroad, unifying the private sector, job creation, and B2B interconnection. This platform represents an exceptional opportunity where participants as job providers aspire to prosper while actively contributing to the growth and economic development of the country. In the past, just after independence, African countries had the mission of concentrating all their effort in the service of the state. However, over time, these countries realized that this approach, although naval, was not sustainable in the long term to ensure the maintenance of a prosperous nation. Thus, states have become aware of the need for the private sector to promote growth and economic development. This awareness has led to the establishment of necessary attribute, ecosystem, and infrastructure, enabling the private sector to become not only an engine for, of growth, but also a creator of jobs. The underlying idea is that trade has no borders, and this applies to all means of transport, whether by air, sea, or land. In this context, the Republic of Djibouti, as a historic crossroad of commerce and trade, is committed to creating all the necessary conditions for trade to achieve the objectives set. We would like to warmly congratulate all the participants who converge from far and wide to take part in this fair. Their commitment demonstrates the vitality and dynamism of commerce in the region. The head of state, His Excellency Ismail Omar Ghele, received it this Monday late morning at the Palace of the Republic in the presence of the Speaker of the Djibouti National Assembly, Dileta Mohamed Dileta, the Speaker of the Kenyan Parliament, Moses Masika, who, at the head of a high-level delegation from his country, has been making a working visit to Djibouti since Saturday evening under the sign of a strengthening relations of fr friendship, solidarity, and cooperation between the two countries and two peoples. Uh, the audience between President Gele and the Speaker of the Kenyan Parliament served as a framework for discussing bilateral relations between the two countries, uh, ways and means to increase the level of commercial exchanges between the two nations, the identification of a strategic partnership and economic complementarity, and the intensification of our process uh, are connecting the two countries to greater sharing of expertise in key areas development uh, were discussed during this meeting. The discussions uh, were then extended to the definition of a new modalities of collaboration between the two countries in terms of regulating the main challenges on the agenda in the region. The uh, Republic of Djibouti and the Republic of Kenya maintain privileged relations who woven by the treat of history and common belonging to the same region, both members of the main regional organizations including IGAD and COMESA, Djibouti and Kenya are increasing uh, the work of their proximity through their constant commitment to the stabilization and integration of the region. The ambassador of the Republic of Kenya to the Republic of Djibouti, His Excellency Salim, uh, Salim, Mr. M. Salim, took part in the meeting between President Gele and the Speaker of the uh, the Speaker of the Kenyan Parliament. Uh, all members of the Bureau of the National Assembly of Djibouti, including the first Vice President, uh, Mr. Safi Almi Jibril, the second Vice President, Omar Ahmed Waiz, the Custer, Ibrahim Ahmed Abdo, and the Secretary of the Bureau, Suleiman Daher Rebile, uh, participate in this event. Uh, also note the presence at, the, at this meeting of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, the Secretary General of the Presidency, Mohamed Abdullahi Waiz. And now listen to the Speaker of the Kenyan Parliament, Mr. Moses Masika. I'm here in Djibouti with a delegation from Parliament of Kenya to visit your country to enhance and deepen our friendship, which is already very cordial. Uh, Kenya and Djibouti have a long history of working together as members of IGAD, as members of COMESA, but above all, as uh, two countries that have been on the front line for a long time in trying to bring peace, stability, and security in our neighboring country of Somalia. 
I have been here uh, in my capacity as the Speaker of the National Assembly of Kenya, but as a leader in my own right in my country, bringing goodwill message from my president to President Ismail Gwele. I've had a good meeting with my brother, the Speaker of the Parliament of Djibouti. I have had an opportunity to address the Parliament of Djibouti, uh, whose highlights were to engage Djibouti with the hope that it can join the East African community so that the integration of the East African region and the Horn of Africa becomes complete to establish a friendship team between our two parliaments and to encourage expansion of trade between our two countries. I've had an exchange of views with uh, President Kwele and I'm satisfied that uh, the future of the relationship between our two countries is bright, promising, and uh, portents a very positive uh, development of unity, trade, and uh, above all, security in the region. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Dileta Mohamed Dileta, reacted to the microphone of our reporting team on the privileged relations uh, woven by the thread of uh, history and common belonging to the same region at the end of uh, the, between the head of state and the speakers of the Kenyan Assembly. He said that the ways and means are to increase uh, the level of commercial exchanges between the two nations, uh, the identification of a strategic partnership and economic complementarity and the intensification of uh, processes uh, connecting the two countries to greater sharing of expertise in key areas uh, development were discussed in, during this uh, meeting. As part of the strengthening of our cooperation relation in the judicial file between the Republic of Djibouti and the State of Qatar, the Minister of Justice and Prison Affairs in Charges of Human Rights, Ali Hassan Badon, paid a working visit to Qatar from December 3 Five, uh, 2023, the minister accompanied by the ambassador of Djibouti to Qatar, Daib Dubadrobele, Ali Mohamed Okiye, technical advisor to the minister, and uh, Colonel Mohamed Yunis, uh, director general of the Gabon Civil Prison, met uh, the, this Sunday with his uh, Qatari counterpart, uh, Masoud bin Mohamed Al Amri. He conveyed uh, the congratulations of the President of the Republic, Ismail Omar Gele, addressed uh, to his brother, uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Tamim bin Mohamed Al Thani. The discussion is held between the two parties focused on the reality and origin of judicial cooperation on the exchanges of expertise and experiences as well as uh, on the development of cooperation between the different judicial institutions of the two countries. Uh, Minister Ali Hassan Badon informed his counterpart of the need uh, to reactivate uh, the existing uh, judicial agreement between the two countries signed in 2010, which will provide a basis for our future cooperation. Uh, Mr. Mas'ud bin Mohammed Al Amri welcomed the proposals. Also, this meeting was an opportunity for His Excellency Ali Hassan Badon to inform the Qatari side about the profound reforms underway in the Djibouti judicial system after the bilateral meeting between the two ministers. Uh, the minister and his delegation paid a, a visit to the uh, Directorate and Com of Commercial uh, and Real Estate uh, Register where uh, they, they were entitled to a detailed explanation of the process of electronic registration and finalization of commercial and real estate documents. Uh, the Minister of uh, Energy and Natural Resources, uh, His Excellency Ali Gedi, continues his participation in the work of the COP28 in Dubai in the United uh, Arab Emirates. Uh, Minister Yunus Ali uh, Gedi first took uh, part yesterday in the high-level session organized by the Green Hydrogen Organization in collaboration with the African Green Hydration Alliance uh, and dedicated to green industrialization in emerging market uh, with the development of green hydrogen in mind. Minister Yunus Ali Gedi subsequently signed a joint declaration between the Republic of Djibouti and the American company uh, Global relating to the accelerations of the large scale development and productions of hydrogen project. Uh, Green in our country in a speech delivered on this occasion, Yunus Ali Gedi uh, affirmed that our country is uh, given uh, its uh, strong uh, potential in renewable energies and is well positioned to become a major player in the rapidly growing green hydrogen market in the world, has abundant land and easy access to the sea, all determining elements to, for producing green hydrogen at the competitive costs. Uh, 
this uh, morning the Sheraton Hotel uh, hosted uh, the kickoff of the annual uh, Congress of the Regional uh, Anti-Doping Organization, marking a first for Djibouti. Two intense days of work are looming on the horizon among the eminent figures present. In addition to the Secretary of State for Sport, Hassan Mohammed Kamil, the Mayor of the City of Djibouti, and uh, Ms. Khadija Ibrahim Idiri, Secretary General of the State Secretary for Sports, honored the event. Uh, representatives of the World Anti-Doping Agency and the regional uh, anti-doping organizations were also present, as uh, were uh, the Secretary General of the Djibouti National Olympic and Sports Committee, the President of the Federation, and other stakeholders, uh, national sports people. The day began with the reactions from the officials. The minister placed emphasis on educating young people about the danger of uh, doping and warming uh, them against any forms of cheating. The mayor of speaking next warmly welcomed the guests to Djibouti and praised the initiative. Uh, the president of the Indian Ocean, uh, Radu Rosa Lakotosi, spoke uh, of the importance of the Congress, highlighting the considerable efforts of Djibouti as an active member of the organization. In uh, Apotheosis, uh, the event concluded with an official forum of symbol of fruitful and perfect collaboration, thus sealing the success of this major Congress for doping free sport. The Secretary of State for Sports, His Excellency Hassan Mohammed Kamil, placed the emphasis on educating young people about the danger of doping, warming them against any forms of cheating, highlighting the considerable efforts of Djibouti as an active member of the organization, warmly welcomed the guests to Djibouti and praised the initiative. The Minister of Youth and Culture, in collaboration with the UNDP, celebrated International Volunteer Week under the theme, The Power of Collective Action. It, if uh, everyone did it uh, from November 13 to December 6, uh, on Thursday, November 13, the first meeting of the week uh, took uh, place uh, at the Higher Institute of uh, Accounting uh, and Businesses, SKA. On this occasion, SKA students collected the fund for the Palestinian solidarity and gave their support to their Muslim brothers in Gaza, also taking part in the a day where the director of social integration of young people and volunteering Rukhia Hassan, the project manager Ms. Nima Warsama, the head of the department for the promotions of the arts, Abdul Hakim Abdul Karim Muhammad, and the director of SKA, Shukri Abdullahi, the week uh, aims to undertake solidarity fundraising actions for the youth of Gaza. This uh, outpouring uh, of uh, generosity initiated by the Ministry of uh, Youth and Culture aims to respond to the call for solidarity launched by the President of the Republic of Djibouti, Ismail Omar Gele, in favor of the Palestinians of Gaza. The initiative entitled The Power of Collective Action is If Everyone Did It, uh, it uh, symbolizes uh, the hope and tangible contribution of the community to a noble cause, uh, helping young Gazans victims of oppression and unspeakable atrocity. The National Agency for Disabled Persons, in collaboration with the Catholic Church uh, Center of Djibouti, organized this uh, morning a closing ceremony for teacher training for children with the mental disabilities at the church center. This initiative is part of the celebrations of National Disability Week. Uh, the launching ceremony brought together the General Director of the NPH, Duale Saeed Mahmoud, the Head of the Catholic Church of Djibouti, the Director of Social Integration and Rehabilitation, Shukri. Hashi Omar, this uh, training was uh, intended for teaching staff with mental disabilities in order to stimulate uh, brain function. Uh, the ceremony ended with the presentations of the certificates to the teacher and a family photo. The Israeli army expanded its operation in the Gaza Strip on Monday, where the death toll among Palestinian civilians is uh, increasing. According to the Gaza Health Ministry, Israeli airstrikes have uh, 
killed at least 509 Palestinians and injured 1,316 uh, since Friday. Israel launched a relentless uh, air and ground offensives on the Gaza Strip following a cross-border attack on October 7 by the Palestinian resistance movement Hamas. More than 15. 15,500 Palestinians, mostly women and children, have been killed in Israel attacks since then. The official Israeli casualty toll is uh, 1,200 dead. And uh, the directives of His Highness Sheikh uh, bin Hamad uh, bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of State of Emirati Fire Hospital, was opened in Rafah, southern Gaza Strip, uh, to help. Uh, treat sick and injured Palestinians and their provider with the medical care. According to the United Nations, uh, no hospitals in the north can provide surgical operations anymore, and the International uh, Committee of uh, Red Cross uh, transport the most seriously injured to the south every day. The opening of this hospital will better ensure adequate uh, medical monitoring to treat uh, the injured and sick. And this is it uh, for the news. Uh, thanks for following the very good continuations of the programs.